Hey, everybody, it's Marty McGibbon. You're listening to the Pure Motive Radio Network. (laughs) You can reach us at puremotiveinc.com. That's puremotiveinc.com. And find us on Facebook. Simply look for Pure Motive Radio and like us because we like you. Now get ready and fasten your seatbelts because you're going to go on the ride of your life with Marty McGibbon's Kick-Ass Personal Transformation. Kick-Ass Personal Transformation is a high-octane recovery talk show that provides you with tools you can use to maintain life balance, a sense of humor, motivation techniques, and messages of inspiration while creating and enjoying a new lifestyle in recovery. Guests on Marty's show are nationally headlining comedians with national TV credits, addiction treatment industry professionals, best-selling authors who write about addiction and recovery, thought leaders, along with health and wellness experts. The show is fast-paced, fun, and informative, and the show provides entertainment, education, and a discussion forum for people in recovery from addiction, or anyone who is involved with someone in recovery, or anyone interested in self-empowerment and personal development. During the show, call in and speak live with Marty. Dial toll-free 855-235-3451. Again, that number is 855-235-3451. If you're listening through your computer, smartphone, or tablet, you can chat live with Marty during the show. Simply scroll to the bottom of your browser and launch the chat room. And now your journey is about to begin on the Kick-Ass Personal Transformation Show. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Marty McGibbon. Hey everybody, it's Marty McGibbon. I am really Stoked again because I've got another kick-ass guest on the show. And tonight, this guy, Leonard Michelle, say hi, Leonard. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being on with us. Hi, Marty. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Leonard Michelle is, is... He's fantastic. He's a thought leader. He's a leader in recovery. He's a mover and shaker. He's a really cool guy. He's funny. I know him. I've met him. Uh, He's a Hollywood dude, and uh, he's an addiction treatment specialist who's doing really wonderful things. Let me just tell you, Leonard, let me just tell him a little bit about what you're doing. Leonard Bushell is a co-founder of Writers in Treatment which is a nonprofit organization that gets treatment for individuals suffering from alcoholism, drug addiction, or other self-destructive behaviors. Writers in Treatment also presents the fabulous Real Recovery Film Festival. I have attended. It's wonderful. It's a multi-day event that's held in eight different cities. Uh, the festival is a celebration of film, the arts, writing, and creativity, and it showcases filmmakers who make honest films about addiction alcoholism, behavioral disorders, treatment, and recovery. There are documentaries, contemporary and classic films, uh, American films, international films. There are first-time filmmakers and industry veterans represented. And Leonard also created the Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards. This is fantastic. Every year he presents this award. It's a charity event charity event that celebrates the benefits of clean and sober living and the importance of humor in the recovery process. I'm so all for that. And all proceeds of the Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards benefit Writers in Treatment's Jewel Sturm Memorial Scholarship Fund. And Jewel Sturm uh, was a victim of um, of this disease. She died of an overdose. And it's, uh, it's in, in her honor that that they have the scholarships. The Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards, they honor uh, a writer, uh, someone who, um, a celebrity who has been honest about the journey through addiction and into recovery. And uh, I was, uh, let's talk about it, Leonard. Tell me tell me all about what you do. You are fantastic. We're celebrating Thank you, Marty. You tonight. Thank you. Funny, when you referred to me as a mover and a shaker, I thought you were talking about my past. 
when I was always <laughs> that moving. Too. Tell us about that. Tell me about your gangster past. I always like hearing these kind of things on this show. <laughs> Our Funny, listeners are in recovery. Re- when I drove myself to a rehab 19 years ago, part of the reason why was because I thought if the police were after me, and I thought <laughs> it would go a little easier on me if I was in a rehab, <laughs> pulled up in their in their vehicles. But that didn't happen, and uh, it's a good thing because I've been able to become a drug counselor in my sober years and uh, start Writers in Treatment five years ago at the film festival. And now we're having our fifth annual Real uh, Experience, Strength, and Hope Award in Los Angeles, where we honor high-profile people who've written memoirs, who've, who've written terrific memoirs about their careers, about their lives, about their addiction or their alcoholism, and 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 their and their resulting recovery. Uh, you know, it's people who could. Who you know the old cliche? Uh, the only reason Elizabeth Taylor went to the Betty Ford Center was that she could turn her fifth step into a book. Oh. So <laughs> we have uh, we had a Lou Gossett Jr. a few years ago, yeah. a terrific book. That's about, a great book. His. Yeah, I know Lou, and and it's a wonderful book. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, Magnificent Desolation that Buzz Aldrin wrote. Uh, a few years ago, and, uh, you know, it's fabulous for someone to think that this man, you know, if he could walk on the moon, he could walk on water, but uh, he couldn't get away from his alcoholism and some of his other issues without um, a program. Yeah. And that was awesome to have have Buzz there a couple years ago. It was terrific because Danny Trejo presented him with the award and I couldn't think of cool two diverse people. I've always said um you know uh, recovery or AA makes for very strange bedfellows. Yeah, right. <laughs> Buzz <laughs> Aldrin like and that. Danny Trejo, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, one was one was a getaway driver, the other one was a test car driver. <laughs> <laughs> so Excellent. That was terrific. And last year, uh, John Taylor, who co-founded Duran Duran, uh, wrote a terrific book about his whole upbringing in England and how he got into the music business and how he helped start Duran Duran and how that went for him for a number of years and and how he ended up uh, having to give it all up about 19 years ago, actually. Right. Uh, 19 years ago. And... uh, and Buzz came to the event, and Robert Downey Jr. presented John with the award. Yes, I was there. That was he. That he was very funny, and I, you know, I was surprised at how funny he is. But Robert Downey Jr. He was hilarious. Off, yeah, totally off the cuff. So it was great to have Iron yeah. Man, the Moon Man, and you know, <laughs> Grand Duran Man. Yeah, all right. Off together. Was, and Bob Bobcat Goldthwait was extremely funny. He is very funny. He killed. Yeah, he just killed. I love that. I don't know how you could be much funnier. He was totally on both his prepared material and his ad libs were just sensational. And this year we have Alonzo Bowden, who Um, is a a, a legend. Uh, I know him. Alonzo Bowden has done my show, Lapaholics, which is uh, looking forward to its fourth annual this year. A number of years ago when he won the last comic standing competition, yeah. which is no easy feat because there's so many people who are, you know, who try out for that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, I've grown to love Alonzo over the years. I saw him do his his uh, his act about 10 years ago at an N.A. convention in San Diego. Excellent. It was thrilling. Yeah, you know, to see an audience, to see someone with an audience where there's waves of laughter. Yeah, you can't laugh on top of a laugh, so you have to wait until the laughter dies down, and then boom, you hit them again. And right, right. Yeah, that's a a recovery audience is the most energetic audience. <clears throat> that's why I love I love doing uh, Yuckaho- Well, I've been in Yuckaholics, I think four times, and uh, 
now I've got this Lapaholic show going because I wanted to share it around the country. I wanted to create another. In um, Alonzo, um, I did uh, Yuckaholics in 2011, and when I was there, I I asked Alonzo if he would. <laughs> I said, would you ever come to Indianapolis because I'm going to try to replicate a show like that. And he mm-hmm. stunned me. He said, yeah, I'll come. I, he said, I, I'm actually, I've got friends in Indianapolis, and I'm coming to visit him this summer. And I was like, oh, cool, because I didn't, I didn't know whether he'd even come to Indianapolis, you know. And I had, and I also had Rich Scheidner there, but both of those guys. Well, top, and Rich top Scheidner the line was the comic. co-founder of the Alcoholics. Absolutely, I know that. Yeah. Who ago. was the other founder? Was Rich and who else? Perhaps Gary David Martell, but don't quote me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And maybe one other gentleman. Maybe it just wasn't just two, but that's been an institution in Los Angeles. Absolutely. Many years. It's, it's 26 uh, years, isn't it? Is it 26 or is it coming up on 27? Sure. I think it's something like that. And I find it historical that the room they use is the Beverly Hills High School Auditorium. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that gets me, but I love that. <laughs> me too. The first time I, I got invited to do that show, all they told me was, they said, um, uh, it, it's a sober show, and uh, and it's at Beverly Hills High School. That's what they said. So I thought, oh, you know, because I'd done 12-step shows, and I thought, well, it'll probably be in, in one of the rooms in the high school, like in a classroom. And it'll be, you know, maybe 20 people sitting around. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. And I went over there. You know, I had a T-shirt and jeans on. I went over there, and I walked in the scraping. They were like, it's over there. And it's this big, giant auditorium. You know, I was like, wow, this is really, this is some serious, you know. But I I, I was just thinking of it as being like, a, you know, in a, in a classroom. I don't know why. I was thinking of a meeting, you know, like an AA meeting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a thousand people or more. It's really oh, I know. I like I said, I've done the show several times. I've been because in it. I guess the irony is that all the performers were their class clowns growing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> hey, uh, so I know your award show was wonderful. I you you pull off uh, this uh, these wonderful events, and I I had the privilege of being there last year. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was absolutely wonderful and um, so inspiring and just so funny. And uh, just you you do this so well. How did you get into – do you mind telling us a little bit about how you got started with your um, – with these with these events that you do and what inspired sure. you to uh, – it's you such know, an inspiration. You know, by the way, probably partially because of my love of detail – I know you loved Bobcat. Downey was terrific. John Taylor made a great acceptance speech. Oh, yeah, he was terrific funny, singer. too. Ed Begley Jr. has been the host the last couple of years, and he'll be hosting again. Oh, I love him. In He's going to be weeks. the host. Joanna Cassidy, uh, the actress best known for Six Feet Under and Blade Runner and a number of other Excellent. shows that are on the air constantly. Excellent. Uh, she'll be presenting the award. Oh, Fantastic. Carrie White, she's been a client and a friend for many years. Oh, yeah, Carrie's going to be our guest uh, uh, next week, oh. February 3rd. Yeah, we're lucky enough to have her on as a guest. We're, we're really looking forward to that. Fantastic. And uh, and Mackenzie Phillips will also be part of the program. All right. But what I really want to ask about last year is, how did you like the buffet? <laughs> I didn't eat anything. I don't, okay. I don't. But you know what? I thought you were great. You gave a talk. You were wonderful, also, and funny. And and I was very, uh, I was both moved and uh, and inspired by your story, because I didn't know how the whole thing got started. And when you shared about the birth of your foundation, you know, mm-hmm. and how that came about, I I I was very. Um, that's Thank that's you. what. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't no, want to take away was, the surprise. Uh, you can tell about that, but it, it, you're, you, yeah, it was a good talk. You were funny, also. I should give credit where credit is due. You're good with a crowd, Leonard. Well, one you're night good. I was driving home from my eight-hour shift as a substance abuse counselor, and about a minute away from the facility, uh, an SUV Yukon crashed into the side of my car at about 40 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, 
I think they call it T-boned my car. My car flew into the air, and all the seat bags exploded, and the windshield broke. Uh, and I, I didn't. I thought I was dying. I, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I had no idea. I did not see the car coming. It just flew through an intersection. Uh, my so car spun around, and I managed to open up the door. And some guy ran over, and he said, "And this is a plug that I should probably get paid for." But he came over to me. He said, "I saw the whole thing. If you weren't in a Volvo, you'd be dead." Oh my gosh. So, so you had a near-death experience. Yeah, a near-killed experience. A near-killed yeah. experience, and yeah, uh, you know, I ended up in the hospital uh, mainly to make sure nothing was broken. And uh, the next morning, I hobbled to a meeting, mentioned <laughs> the accident to someone. Yeah. He said, "My God, I have a really good accident attorney." And you oh. should go see someone because that's a she read a red light because uh, I was at a right. I was I mean I was going through the intersection somebody runs a red light and eventually uh, we settled the case and and I thought uh, what can I do with this little with this little windfall with this little um, gift I got from from the heavens so to speak. Mm-hmm. Or, or, uh, and I thought I, I had been a substance abuse counselor for some years, and I'd previously I had been a publisher, mm-hmm. and I've always had books on the top of my gratitude list. Uh, mm-hmm. But before I got clean and sober, books have saved my life. You know, they alleviate boredom. They teach you things. They entertain you. They make you laugh. And... And and you're never alone with a good book. And, of course, once I got into the program, I saw there was another book that saved a lot of lives also, mainly the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And none of these just type themselves. None of these things just come out of nowhere. There's people behind everything, behind every script, every movie you see. Those words are not being made up by the actors more often than not. There are screenwriters. Every yeah. time I read a news article, whether it's in a paper or online, some journalist, some essayist, you know, had to write that. Uh, and so I'm so in love with the written word, and a number of family members are writers. And I was friends with Buddy Arnold, a uh, well-known saxophone player out of New York who came to California, had his bottom on heroin, and ended up starting a an organization called the Musicians Assistance Program, where he would help musicians suffering from the disease of alcoholism or addiction get into rehab. And he passed away about six years ago. And and, uh, and I thought after I got that that check from the insurance company, I said, I want to do something with this. I want to do something that this, that I'm passionate about that I want that I think I can do for the rest of my life. And I thought, well, why not start a similar organization to Buddies, but trying to get people in the writing industry into rehab? I love that. Have fallen, uh, you know, so far down that they might not have insurance anymore, and they're not employed anymore. Uh, and uh, and so I, I used that money to start Writers in Treatment. And a couple months after doing that, I thought, why? What can we do? Was on a very limited budget to help start getting the word out about the organization. And I looked on the Internet, and I found that no one was really doing any kind of film festivals involving recovery movies or addiction movies or alcoholism movies. No, they don't, yeah. So we started five years ago, and the first year we primarily had a, a number of classics, which I wanted a whole new generation to to go with friends, to go with groups, to see certain films that I knew would fascinate them but scare them and educate them, you know, things that some people of uh, the baby boomers might take for granted that we've all seen the days of wine and roses. Yeah. And we've all seen less than zero. And we've all seen mm-hmm. leaving Las Vegas. And there's a whole generation who hadn't. And yeah. we don't just 
show the films, we always have either a, a filmmaker or someone yeah. involved with the film talk afterwards, or we'll have a clinician do a mini process group afterwards. I love so we that. Just yeah, when I – yeah, uh, go ahead. I, I was just really impressed because I saw the Bill W. documentary at your festival, and um, and you had the filmmaker there, and that was very yeah. interesting. It you was know, it was great. There's two, the two people directed it, Dan Caraccino and, and Kevin Hanlon. Kevin lives in New York. So when I screen the film in New York, Kevin comes because okay. he's in New York. And in California, uh, Dan Caracino comes because that's a terrific movie, and it's great. And they became experts on Bill W. by researching that book for several years. That's right. And, and uh, they went. didn't they go to Akron, too? And... They went everywhere. Yeah, they did you all know, the they research. Spent more time in libraries than most people do nowadays. They didn't just do all their research online. They went places and they spoke to people and they interviewed from right. people who, you know, knew Bill back then. And yeah. uh, you know, if you wait too many years, there aren't going to be any people around who knew Bill. Right. Nice I know it was that, just that archival, you know, that 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 those memories firsthand. And, yeah, so we always have a clinician talk or a filmmaker talk. We got very lucky. Our first year, our first film was Permanent Midnight by oh, yeah. by uh, Stahl, Jerry Stahl. Yeah, you know, yeah the, the guy that did Alf, right? Feet, and uh, uh, played by Ben Stiller. And they both came to the theater, and after the film, they were on stage for about 30 minutes having a terrific conversation with themselves and with the audience. Excellent. About how that whole process came to be. And, and Ben Stiller was just brilliant in that film. Yeah. And it was a, a great conversation. So we got off to a good start five years ago. That and was your first one. Coincidentally. Okay. So we have a caller as well. Uh, let me know, Marty, when you want to bring the caller. Oh, on. sure, Leonard, are you are you up for a call? This is about how fantastic that this year we showed a film called Still Alive, about mm-hmm. Paul Williams, made by an old time fan. It was made two years ago, of a filmmaker, L.A. filmmaker, who thought, "Gee, Paul Williams, I haven't heard about him in a long time. I wonder if he's still alive." So he searches for him and he finds him performing and he goes up to Canada and make and follows him around for a year, makes a terrific movie about Paul Williams, his his past, his present, and his recovery. And and it's ironic that last night he made one of the best acceptance speeches at the Grammys last night. Because he Beautiful. now works work. And he was the one they handed the award to because he got uh I believe it was Song of the Year. And he mentioned how uh, in his whole using career, he would have tremendous hallucinations and bizarre fantasies. But it was only after he got sober that he got a call from a couple robots who wanted him to help them write a song. (laughs) Everyone saw the Grammys last night, but there were two robots there. accepting the award with Paul Williams. So it was nice that he gave a little shout-out to the past and the present and how yeah. it, you know, it gets better and it could get weirder. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you, are you up for a call? We have a caller. You want to go, go ahead? I'd and, be happy and, to. Sure. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, Steve. Let's see who it is. Yeah, you got it. Hello? Hi, this is Marty with Kick-Ass Personal Transformation. we got Leonard Bushell here on the... On the show. Leonard Bushell, this is your long lost amiga, Doreen. How are you? Doreen Garcia? Doreen Garcia? <laughs> yes. Yes. How are you? I'm very well. I'm, I'm just very calling well. to tell you that you're an amazing man and, and what you're doing is, is amazing, powerful, inspirational, and I just adore you. Thank you, Doreen. Um, Thank you, Doreen. I second that. Doreen was very instrumental in helping us produce an event in Los Angeles just a couple of years ago. Doreen, do you remember what that was? I sure do, with Danny Trejo and quite a few celebrities, and and right. the biggest celebrity of them all, Leonard Bouchel. 
No, I think yes. this was <laughs> here. Here, I I I I, I tip I tip my my uh, my helmet to Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yes, yes I remember that night. Ditto. That was sensational. Yes, and we talked was. a little about, about it earlier. And, and I just yes. think that the work you continue to do with writers in treatment for writers in treatment is just it's just amazing, Leonard. And I hope you realize that you're a very very powerful man in the recovery community. Well, we, yeah, we are very grateful, Leonard, for what you're doing. And the, the healing just ripples out and keeps on, on going. And, and you're helping artists who are, are recreating. I mean, it's just going to keep going. The healing studio is going to keep on Well, I wish my uh, mother was exponentially. alive. Exponentially. I wish my mother was alive to hear that. I'm sure she's watching over you, Leonard. I think she, she can hear it, yeah. She's she was here. always waiting to hear from the lawyer or the police. Or a uh, hospital, <laughs> and uh, yeah. she'd be very. She did get to see me for seven years. The last seven years of her life, I was uh, clean and sober. Sober, yeah. So she got to stop worrying about me for for a while. Very and uh, I tell people when I was working in treatment, I said it's it's you know the legacy when one has a mishap through drugs and alcohol, whether it's in jail or they die. You know, it's it's their journey, and they can handle it. It's always the relatives and the family. They're hurt deeply, yeah. Hurt and, yeah. Uh, and you know, in pain sometimes yeah. that they have to carry with them for forever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not a, not a happy legacy to live, and I... Oh, and it was years ago my mother was called by a doctor in a hospital in Los Angeles, and she was in Philadelphia, and she said, you better come to L.A. There's a 50-50 chance you're going to have to fly home with a body. Oh. And to have put her through that, you know, the amends, the living amends of stay, getting and staying sober. And I did not get sober immediately after that by any means. Oh, yeah? At least in the end I was able to. That's great. So, and my my yeah. solution to my my I was I was unconscious for several days, and at the time my solution for not wanting to have that type of uh, overdose again was to switch from vodka to Bombay gin. <laughs> not a you know yeah. it's funny to me now, but at the time it absolutely yeah. made sense. I mean it's ridiculous, but it made sense. And I understand how. Yeah, we make deals with our fellow people to denial. to accept that uh, a, a change is going to come, one way or the other. <laughs> so you switched from vodka to rum. Is that was that? Oh, Bombay gin. Stuff? Oh, to I mean to gin. Yeah. Gin, I'm sorry. yes. But you gin. switched. You just switched flavors. I I mean I did that too. I I. Uh, I made deals with myself when I was drinking. I, I would say, "Oh, I'm good, just going to drink vodka," and then, you know, then I'd have a, a really just a horrible consequences with that. And then it'd be, "Oh, this time I'm just going to drink." Uh, one time I, I I was, "Oh, I'm just going to drink wine, like really good imported French wine," and that way, because it costs so much and it's hard to get, then I won't I won't drink as much. This is what I thought, and uh, I had a car accident, guzzling uh, red wine, you know. <laughs> I mean, I just totally screwed that, that up. But I, I would think, oh, I can hedge myself in with this. I'll, I'll change to that. And, and, of course, it doesn't work because it's a disease. And uh, I, I think this is really inspiring that you're sharing your story with us. And uh, and it's beautiful that um, that you're an example of someone who I'm sure you had talents in your addiction that you were using, I'm sure you were a go-getter in the uh, alcohol and drug world. I just, I, I just, I, I'm sure that you were, and <laughs> because here in your recovery, you're doing the same thing. You've taken all these skills and talents, all, all your networking abilities and your personality and your, your communication skills and people skills, and you turned it and harnessed it toward, toward healing and recovery for everyone. Thank you. And. Uh, this is an example of what can be done in recovery. I mean, our, the listener, our listeners here on Pure Motive Radio Network are in recovery. There are a lot of people in recovery that listen. And uh, 
I just wanted to kind of spell that out. And 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 then what I also love is that when you were a counselor and you'd been sober, what, how long when you had the car accident? Probably for years, right? Uh, I've been about 14 years. Right. So there you were. Somebody, somebody ran a red light, slammed you. You nearly were killed. I mean, they almost murdered you. Uh, but here you are. You know, there's again a, an example of recovery. Just the resilience that out of the ashes of that that horrible experience. And when you got a settlement, you you weren't thinking of yourself and hey, I'm going to buy this or go here and there. I mean, you were thinking, what can I do with this gift? From above, you know, what can I do um, for people in recovery? What what can I do? You know, what can I contribute? And I mean, that's just like straight out of the big book. You know, what can we pack into the? How much can we pack into the stream of life? You know, what can we do? I I think it's really inspiring, and that's why these events are so beautiful, because it's born from this. And I, (laughs) I mean, I'm just really inspired by your story. Thank you. Is Doreen still with us? I hope so. I know. No, she's not. No. Okay. Darn it. She's she a real on for in, the speaker in the recovery world in Southern California as well. Well, we should call her back. Has helped many people. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a great role model for many, many women on a on a personal and a professional level. I'm sorry she had to go. Yeah, uh, me too. I just want to say something in regards to what you're talking about. There's a great James Baldwin quote, and hopefully everyone there is familiar with James Baldwin. He he said, nothing is more desirable than to be released from an affliction, but nothing is more frightening than to be divested of a crutch. Ah. I'll just say one more time. Nothing is more desirable than to be released from an affliction, but nothing is more frightening than to be divested of a crutch. Beautiful. So when people are on the cusp, when they're about to have their moment of clarity, um, you know, it's 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 it seems like a, it seems easy, and it's the most difficult thing in the world. And uh, and you know, it's it's just a fabulous thing that everybody goes through. And I just want to read one other thing that I carry in my pocket all the time, and it's by it's by Luther, Martin Luther, who I guess founded Protestantism. Um, he said, <laughs> well, and I always thought this was the best. Phrasing, this was the best description of a bottom I'd ever heard. He said, God works by contraries, so that a man feels himself to be lost in the very moment when he is on the point of being saved. When God is about to justify a man, he damns him. Whom he would make alive, he first must kill. God's favor is so communicated in the form of wrath that it seems farthest when when it is at hand. Man must first cry out that there is no health in him. He must be consumed with horror. This is the pain of purgatory. And in this disturbance, salvation begins. When a man believes he is utterly lost, light breaks. Wow. <laughs> Thank you You're for welcome. sharing those two profound quotes. You know, they keep me, they, they, they help me. As do a lot of, I mean, like I said, I found that writers in treatment because books and and the words I've read and the thoughts I've been exposed to and the stories that have been told are just uh, a fabulous thing. You know, I guess there's two things that separate us from the animal kingdom. One, humans cook their food and animals don't. And we write books. Yeah. <laughs> and we write movies and we write short stories. Right, and we're always trying to make sense of things through the the stories we tell. So if we can help anybody in the audience who's a, who's a, you know having trouble, having problems, is on the is on the precipice. Uh, the website is writersintreatment dot org, and you know please check us out. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, we publish a weekly e-bulletin. It's called the Addiction Recovery e-bulletin. And it goes out every Tuesday and it's just very con- 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 concise uh compilation of the week's news. The week's news involving uh 
studies of alcoholism, uh, celebrity mishaps, new, uh, you know, new rehabs opening, yeah. uh, new books that are written about the subject. It's uh, we had a fabulous uh, video of a of a doctor, a neurobiologist named Carl Hart, who's who's breaking in on the scene. Uh, and if anybody wants to get that, it's it's a week. It's of no charge. It's the Addiction Recovery e-Bulletin. If you go to Writers in Treatment, I believe there's a place on the website where you can sign up to re- to receive the e-Bulletin. And uh, it goes, uh, and it's very entertaining as well. Yeah, there's I'm. A lot, I'm of, uh, a lot of interesting. I, and the subtitle. I'm is, signing up right now, Leonard. The subtitle is "That Was the Week That Was." So we're not printing blog stories. We're not printing old things. Everything. More or less, that is in the e bulletin happened in the last week. So, Beautiful. if any of your listeners want to get it, it is on the writersintreatment.org website. And on the right hand side, it says Addiction Recovery e Bulletin. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. Writersintreatment.org. Got it. Uh, so, we'll go back to that again. We have another caller. Do you, Are you ready, Leonard? Uh, I, <laughs> let's take, can we take this call, Steve? Absolutely. Anything to get me to stop talking, please. Oh no, Leonard, you're you're beautiful. We're loving it. Hey. <laughs> All right. So Can we take that call? call? Yep, you got it. Hi, welcome Hello. to the show. I know you want to Hi. talk to Leonard. Hi, Leonard. This is Danny. Danny Connor. How are you? Hello, Danny Connor. <laughs> I was with the. In fact, I was with Doreen. I I couldn't wait. I saw so I was going to come on. Remember, I was going to get on there, and I, I ran as soon as she got home. I'm running down with the laptop. I said, "We got to call in to talk to Leonard." <laughs> so, Thank you oh, for calling in. Isn't it great that you both I, have my 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 personal phone number? But we're such <laughs> we're such frustrated exhibitionists that we we like to. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, hon, I just, I always admire the work, and it's just, I always smile when I see anything, you know, pop up. It just, I, I get that, that inner, mm, just happiness, and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just in awe, and so keep it up, keep it up. Unfortunately, the phone cut off, so that's why she went off and did her thing. So, oh, is that but what happened? We yeah, because we were, yeah. <laughs> Leonard was saying together, all kinds together, of good so. things about Doreen, and I oh, thought, oh, gosh, amazing. it's a shame uh, yes. that we couldn't have her. We've been friends her. for 26 years, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I I won't let her go because she, I, if I rub, rub on her, they were going to have all that loveliness. Anyway, but, and, I, and, and I've, I met her through, met Leonard through her, and I just, you know, I just, you know, anything that comes with Interim, I know that these these two guys, both Leonard and her, are amazing. Just amazing Great. people. Great. And just anything to help others. And it's like they carry the message in in a variety of ways and very unique ways and creative ways. And exactly. It's, that's, that's, that's what we're here for. So anyway, I just want to chime in and say hi. And I love you, Leonard. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> I will see you soon, I hope. Indeed. I hope. Okay, baby. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, Danny. Nice to meet you. Um, well, you've got people helping? calling in. Isn't it easier this way? <laughs> With the call ins? No, no, it's just helping people in general. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant your interview was easier when you were getting call ins. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes I want to tell people. You know, a lot of people can't hang in AA because, you mm-hmm. know, the the real prayer of AA is the St. Francis prayer. Yeah. And, you know, it's very few diseases that doctors prescribe the St. Francis prayer. Yeah. So we have a disease that it seems like maybe in addition to many other tools of recovery, uh, at least at least considering living the St. Francis prayer, yeah. you know, should be on the table. You yeah. know, living the St. Francis prayer means a little bit of a, a disappointment to the ego. Yes, it does. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it maybe takes a few years. And I know initially the, you know, the, 
the main goal is to not drink or use, and then it takes a few years, but things do fall in place. You know, it is a collaborative venture. Individuals, in, you know, the individuals, groups, higher power, community, family, uh, pro, you know, uh, providence, luck. Right. Poetry. You need a little, a little bit of all of it. But it's uh, it's worth it's worth the, uh, you know, you know we do we also do and we'll be doing we do a, a discussion uh, once a year in some city or another called Chasing the Muse. Oh yeah. Stone Cold Sober. And we started this in Los Angeles uh, a few years ago, and William Moyers, William Cope Moyers, is is always the uh, the host. Yeah. And we started a number of years ago in Los Angeles. Basically, with uh, creative people, some screenwriters, some actresses, some writers, some poets, some novelists, initially, uh, uh, talking about once they got sober, you know, you sort of like, or it's, you're sort of like a little bit of a deer in the headlights. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I don't have any of my tools. How do you get through <laughs> right. six months of of the desert of not picking up a joint, not taking a drink when you get bored, when you can't write. Right. When you're just, and your brain has to has to heal and learn how to do just, things again, right? right. Because the you old have endorphins aren't coming right with any state help. dependent memory. Yeah, right. Get through that. So we've had great discussions with Katie Segal and and Mark Ebner and Dan Fonte, the great poet, and a terrific novelist, Michelle Hunovan. And we do that conversation. We did it last year at the film festival in New York, uh, again with William Moyers. And we had David Carr, the great award-winning New York Times journalist. And we had the million, million bookseller, uh, Lawrence Block, who writes that great series, Matthew Scudder, where the detective in the books, throughout, you know, in the series of books, he, he ends up getting sober. And Lawrence Block writes great detective mystery stories and has for years. And and you have brought so many people together. Susan Schieber um, was on stage with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, not me. I just sat in the audience. We'll let William Moyers do his, his magic. And Susan Schieber, who wrote that great uh, biography of Bill W. a few years yeah. ago. And mm-hmm. uh, Malachi McCourt was one of the guests and I like uh, one of the questions from the audience was how do you you know wh- what's your what are your feelings about anonymity and Malachi McCourt said my anonymity is mine to do with as I please <laughs> you know, we sort of stunned the audience because no <laughs> <laughs> I love the, that Michael Winship who is one of the great Michael Winship is the producer of Moyers and Company the Bill Moyers show Oh, and he's also wonderful. the president of the WJA East. So these are some really brilliant people who I can only aspire to be able to understand it when they talk and then when they write. And they right. were there sharing about how they got through the first year. Oh, of not I love anymore. that. And we're going to be doing another Chasing the Muse panel in San Francisco at the end of April. We have oh, my a- gosh, I'm going to be here. I'm I'm I'm... Can I go? Is this is open to the public? Can, can you get down to the uh, place called Delancey Street? A very oh, famous heck yeah. therapeutic community <laughs> that's been in San Francisco for. I know it. You know, I was an addiction counselor in San Francisco. Okay. I mean, they've yeah. been there for 30 years, and they have a uh-huh. beautiful I know theater Delancey. right on the Embarcadero, right near uh, where the Giants play baseball. Right, right. I know where it is. And on the on the 24th to the 27th in San Francisco at Delancey Street, we'll be having uh, our first Real Recovery Film Festival, San Francisco edition. Oh, my gosh. What a great year to be here this winter. I'm loving it. I'm oh, sorry, Steve. Steve's back in Indianapolis with in, that polar vortex. <laughs> I'm so down. the 24th, where do we find information about this event, the Chasing the Muse event? Is that on Writers in Treatment? Where uh, we it'll find be, that? We'll be posting the information soon. 
It's okay. actually on uh, the information you want information about the film festival. Go to alcoholjustice.org. Okay, alcoholjustice.org. Alcoholjustice.org. They're a great ag- advocacy organization that tries to get uh, alcohol ads off bus stops where kids are waiting to go to school. Oh, uh, good. I wish they like, would do that. They're terrific. So they're our partners, and it's alcoholjustice.org. And a few weeks before that, we're actually having a Real Recovery Film Festival in Houston, Texas. Oh, uh, April, great. April 2nd to the 4th. And that, you, you can go to realrecoveryfilmfestival.org. You can uh, go to writersintreatment.org. There's a phone number. Yeah. Feel free to call. Right. Yeah. I've got friends in Houston. I'm going to tell them about it. I have friends in, in well, Houston that I can. Great. Yeah, and uh, it'll be great to be in San Francisco. We have a number of films that were shot in San Francisco that we're going to be showing, and uh, we're looking forward to having a great time. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, on the so, bay. It, you know, Leonard, you were talking about how things kind of fall, you know, fall into place, how they kind of come together. You know, you were talking about the journey through recovery. And... um would you say that that's true with what you've been doing? That uh, uh, you're bringing all these people together who are these great minds and and all these really talented uh, people, and and you're having these events. Does does it just kind of fall into place? Is it one of those things that's kind of like they say um, sometimes? <laughs> some people say, is it a god shot, or is this something that um, that you campaign for? I'm I'm just wondering because I've got a feeling that you. That uh, there's an element of uh, HP in there, uh, and I don't, I don't mean Hewlett Packard either. Um, um, is that true? Well, I think there's also a little bit of AT and T in there, also. <laughs> <laughs> and Verizon. I yeah, call right. these, I introduce myself out of the blue sometimes. Do you? Yeah, and I think. Oh, uh, great. You know, there's a little bit of Yahoo there too. Oh, so you're you're networking, you're campaigning. I mean, you're looking for seeking people, cold calling, and all of this. What what a tremendous what a tremendous um, work you're doing then. And it's, then, it's, yeah. And then it's uh, it's a little HP too, and I'm not talking yeah. about my Hewlett Packard printer either. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. Which is also important. <laughs> yes. Well, it's so, very um, encouraging. To hear this, Steve, have you got? Any, you're going to throw your hat in on this. Have you got anything to say? Well, I posted a lot of the links, Leonard, that you just shared with us, and uh, I did want to find out with the Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards that's coming up, right? It is yes. on Thursday, February thirteenth. Yep. And if people want to uh, get tickets, they can go to Riders in Treatment or. Uh, oh anybody. yeah, that's. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I got yes. mine last year. I think, I think the there's idea is to get it. To, to uh, there's a link to tickets somewhere. Yeah, it's real easy to find on the website. I I should have mentioned that, but Steve, this is why you're the, this is yeah. why you're here, and this is why you're the producer. If they just no click problem. on the little uh, <laughs> apography that says Experience, Strength, and Hope Award, it'll take you to a place where you can get tickets. Yeah, it's and real you, easy. I did it, so we know it's going to be easy. And if you can't make it there, the book that Carrie White will be talking about next week, we can give her a, a called Uppercut, is really yes. terrific. I just finished it, and it's a great testament to to someone who has uh, has has made the most of Hollywood as a playa, and even yeah. more of it as a as a I don't want to put. I don't want to put words in my mouth, but uh, <laughs> as a as a woman of grace and elegance and integrity and sobriety and cleanliness, I'm, I, mean, yeah. I mean she's also clean and sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I've I've been I'm reading her book too. I'm not. Um, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's an it's an ex- excellent book. So. Yeah. So um, we, we only have about eight minutes left. Uh, okay. Linda, right. Did you, did you have any? I'm dying to know. Do you have any teasers for us? What What will be 
who will be at the the Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards this year or anything that's uh, going to happen that you can share with us now? Yeah. Well, he one told of us the more important aspects of this event is that it's free parking. Uh, Great. At the Skirball Cultural Center, right on the 405, uh, That's somewhere a beautiful between the San family. Fernando Valley and yeah. Westwood. It's very easy to get to. It's right off the freeway. It has its own exit called the Skirball Drive exit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's a, uh, you know, there is a dress code. The dress code is is, is very, you know, clearly stated on the invitations. There's no tuxedos and no Birkenstock. So right, right between, anything right between. In between, anything in between, yeah. <laughs> in between, and we're just there to laugh and have a good time, you know, get dressed up a little, celebrate uh, recovery outside the rooms, and uh, you know, and and like I said, just I'm always pleased when people leave. You know, they call it a fundraiser. We're we're we're, we're happy if we break even as long as everybody enjoys themselves. <laughs> and everybody yeah. who, who buys a ticket gets a free copy of Carrie's book. So oh, Martin, excellent. You can mention that again next week. <laughs> yeah, you didn't do that last year. Yeah, we didn't do You're that doing... last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get down there. Uh, I'm going to try. I, Leonard, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to try to get down there. I've got to uh, do a keynote speech in Monterey, and then but it's in the morning, so I'm thinking I can uh, – Keep on heading down the 101 South, and uh, hope to hope to see you see you there. Yes, uh, or if you want, I have a friend who's a masseuse at Esalen. You could stop by there for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrific. Down the one and watch the golf. Watch yeah. the golf swimming off the coast. You know, whenever yeah. people in Los Angeles complain about the Santa Ana winds. <laughs> Now we can just say, how about the how about the frigid Arctic? You know, how about the polar vortex? Yeah, that's right. it, the Arctic vortex. Yeah, people in LA are so funny. It's it, moisture is a problem, you know. It's, oh, it's raining. Well, <laughs> there's Whole Foods, which is, has a lot of moisturizers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in New York a few weeks ago when the day started out at three degrees and it went up to nine. Uh huh. Outside it was like walking into some bizarre science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I thing. know when you live in on the West Coast, you, you the yeah, well, especially SoCal yeah, when you the live first there. Question that came to my mind is, how long do I have to keep my eyes open before they freeze over? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, it could happen. I mean, it, it's it, it's what is it, Steve? Back in Indianapolis right now, isn't it about seventeen below or? Well, I just uh, I had to walk my dogs before the show, and it was one degree. And I can ah. tell you, it felt. I mean, that was the literal temperature with wind chill. It was very, very cold. It was a yeah. quick walk. <laughs> I think William it's Moyers. Insane. William Moyers posted a picture of his phone today. It was minus fifteen. Ah. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, so we're very cold. fortunate to be where you are, uh, where I am, and yeah. no matter where you are, if you're at a meeting, it's warm and cozy. I exactly. Do if, yeah, and walk into a meeting and you can feel and the if warmth. If you have to go online, the line, if it's that cold and you know churches are closed and I know schools are closed, there's always a yeah. website called InTheRooms.com. Hey, I know. I love In the Rooms. I'm a big fan. In the Rooms. dot com, which has video meetings for people. It's a wonderful. Who yeah, it's live a wonderful in the resource. Of nowhere or in other countries where they're not as fortunate as big cities like New York, L.A., and San Francisco, where you know a mile away you're going to find a meeting. And so that's a good uh, a good resource for people stuck in the snow. In the room. It is. Um, and even if the weather's good, in the rooms is a great place to go. There are all kinds of resources there for mm-hmm. recovery. There, are, like you said, videos. There are articles. You can network with other people. It's kind of a social networking site for people in recovery. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, Leonard, you had you a couple. Of, that. You had a couple of sayings, and just when you were talking, what was going through my mind is a very common one. 
uh, but the pen is mightier than the sword. And I think it's interesting because you That's saw true. that. And when I was thinking about it, you're right. I mean, the writers, it's so powerful what they do. And you have turned that around to help out uh, writers through the writers in treatment. I think it's amazing that you had that foresight. Well, thank you. As I said, some family members are writers. Uh, with Buddy Arnold's passing, who was doing for his people, uh, musicians, I had a publishing company back in the mid-'90s, and I thought, well, with a publishing career and a substance abuse certified counseling career, you know, how can I blend those two worlds? And so it's probably the two things I'm more passionate about than anything other than my family, which is recovery and literature and films, you know, partly which is why we're now entering our sixth year of film festivals and why we're in seven different cities. Uh, because I, I often joke and say, I think films are my drug of choice. <laughs> they are mine. I know that that that's I don't mean at home, I mean going to a theater. Yeah. It's uh-huh. like there's something sacred. I mean, movie theaters used to be called like dr- dream dream castles. Dream It events. is like a waking dream, isn't it? And when they're when you take the journey in film, there there's something it's good for your brain. You just don't have don't to you be think not to see any of the top 5 films on the on the top box office films. Just stay away from those, and you might see something interesting. Well, that's what I mean. When you see a really, um, like a documentary or a, American a House. classic film, yeah. something something really good uh, happens with your brain. I, I think with television, it, it's not quite so um, uh, potentially. Anyway, well, uh, I'm mumbling. No, most TV shows are created just to keep the commercials from bumping into each other. That's what they <laughs> want. Yeah, it's just a way to feed you a bunch of advertising. But thank God um, for your time and HBO and PBS. Yeah, I love HBO. And, yeah, well, commercial-free television is wonderful. I wish we could have it all the time. Uh, they do it in England, but anyway, I guess they're a oh, – whatever. But, Leonard, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, if there, there's writers in treatment, right? There's a and, uh, page for Writers in Treatment and Real Recovery Film Festival. Wonderful. Provided uh, you're one of the you know, 500 million people on Facebook who happens to be <laughs> listening. Uh, Writers in Treatment has a Facebook page, and so does Real Recovery Film Festival, and Real is spelled R-E-E-L. Yes, which oh, I know good. Is current... Um, you know, to the next generation, they're not going to know what re- what that means, but film needs <laughs> to come on reels. Yes, right. Word <laughs> will be obsolete in about a couple more years. In about eight minutes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's R E E L, Recovery Film Festival, uh, or Real Recovery Film Festival dot org. So well, we're not good. hard to find, and if you're in Studio City, California. Uh, I'll probably bump into you at the Pete's Coffee Shop. Excellent. Okay. Well, now we know how to get a hold of you. We've heard all kinds of wonderful things. Um, I still want to hear about what you did in the uh, uh, when you asked me to ask you about your past. I I have been so. Uh, the goal was to get people to say yes and not get caught. Let's leave it. <laughs> at Okay. Uh, I hope you'll come on again, Leonard. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful guest. Will you, will you, you come Marty. back and see us again? Talk with us again? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Wonderful. All it's right. an honor to have you here, and thank you for your work. All right. Good luck on your journey to Monterey and, and everywhere. <laughs> uh, it, it's all it, – every, everything's great with me. I'm I'm really happy right now. And, uh, hey, look, this I'm not in the San snow. Andreas fault. We'll be okay. <laughs> and then we'll be movers and shakers, man. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Circle, very good. Bookend. Thank you, Marty. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Leonard. Good night. Bye. 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 Hello, 
friends, this is Steve Thompson, executive producer at Pure Motive Radio. We hope you've enjoyed the kick-ass personal transformation show with Marty McGibbon. And tune in next week, Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where Marty will have more of this entertaining, inspirational, motivational program broadcast to you. Kick-Ass Personal Transformation is brought to you by the Pure Motive Radio Network. Hey, check out our website. Simply go to www.puremotiveinc.com. Again, that's puremotiveinc.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply look for Pure Motive Radio and like us because we like you. If you've enjoyed this show, you'll probably like all of the other shows we have. Tune in on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the One Upper Show, where callers call in with their best stories to one-up each other. Then on Wednesdays, we have the Serenity Sisters Show. They cover all the issues women face in sobriety. It's time to put on your big girl panties. Tune in with the Serenity Sisters, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.